Hi there and welcome. In this video I want to show you some examples of charts that were created with the free R software and why it might be a good idea to use charts made by R rather than standard Excel charts. One of the strengths of R is, and, and the ggplot2 package in particular, is um, so-called faceting. As you can see here in the example of box plots, you can easily arrange several plots on one image and have them aligned nicely and make them look professional. So here we have height and BMI and then several parameters and two genders for each plot, female and male. The next example shows the same block box plots again, but now we have the data points also shown, which gives us more information about the underlying distributions. And also we can see that um, there are more males in the sample than females. And note that um, the dots here have some um, transparency so that they do not um, hide too much of the box plots. This is another example of the same box plots, but just with a different arrangement, so it's very easy to specify the number of rows and columns. So this may be suited better for vertical page formats. The next example shows some histograms, and again we have faceting um, with the same parameters that we have seen just now. The next example shows more histograms, the same histograms as before, but this time um, with an additional coloring for another variable gender. So we have women in red and men in this type of green. This is an example I particularly like. We have 10 scatter plots in all. So um, it's like 10 correlations. We see the original data in the scatter plots and we see linear regression lines which show a trend in the data. And now we can easily compare um, correlations between height and all the parameters and BMI and all the parameters. Um, and we see that um, the slopes of the regression lines are different. And the blue shadings show confidence intervals. So we see they are narrower in the middle where there's more data and broader um, at the sides where there are fewer data points. The next picture shows the same scatter plots again, but this time we do not have linear regression slopes, but we have lowest um, curves. So we see that uh, we can also model nonlinear relationships and we see that there are different slopes in different areas of on the x-axis. So a nice alternative. Now I've shown a lot of plots with faceting. This is a different one. It's only one plot, but a lot of information included in one plot. Um, it's a scatter plot again. We have two regression slopes um, for females and males separately. We see that males are generally um, taller in this sample, uh, and also the slopes are a bit different. Um, we also have confidence intervals. And then the dots themselves are also colored by gender. And then additionally, the shapes display different parameters. So we have three parameters combined in one plot and then separate information for, for gender. Okay, and this brings us to our last example. This is more about a method, but I also like it as a visual display of information. The method is called a decision tree. It's the R part algorithm. And the chart is about the question, when the Titanic sank, whether the principle women and children first was followed. And I think this is particularly easy to understand for, for people without a statistics background. We see that um, there are splits made by various features and the algorithm the algorithm selects that feature that brings about the most notable differences. And here it's about um, people 
who died and people who were saved, we see that overall a majority of people died. Um, by the way, this is a training data set, um, so it does not contain all Titanic passengers. The most important feature is sex. We see that a vast majority of the men died, whereas a vast majority of the women were saved. So here we can say on the first level that the principle women first was followed. And then when we look at the branch on the left side for the men, we see that age is the next important feature and children up to six years were mostly saved, 16 of 24, whereas older men mostly died. So for men we can say that yes, the principle was, was followed, that um, children were saved first. For women there's a different story. The next important feature is passenger class and we see that women in the third class had were a, lo a lot worse off than uh, women in the first and second class. In the third class chances were 50-50 or 72 died and 72 survived. Whereas in the first and second class only 9 out of 170 women died. And then we have two more splits by age. I don't want to go into too much detail now, but we see that on the last level um, chances for women in the third class were best for small children up to five years. So I hope there were some um, interesting ideas for charts and diagrams for reports or thesis maybe. Um, if you have data and you need help in visualizing it, um, you're welcome to contact me and also do workshops where I show how to do charts um, with the R software. Thanks for your attention and goodbye.